All right, everyone, back to mechanics of materials, and to, and we're gonna talk right now about more circle um, for plane stress, and and more circle is just a, a graphical tool for stress these stress transformation equations that are here, and uh, um, something that Otto Moore, the German civil engineer, came up with a long, long, long time ago, and uh, um, but it, it really is just a, a graphical tool, a visual way to see how to go from one state of stress to another. And usually what you're given is a state of stress here, you know, that you calculated from using all your stress equations like MY over I or, or uh, uh, VQ over IT, all the, the shear stress equation, you know, whatever, right? You got the state of stress at a point in a structure, and now you want to find this either the state of stress at a new angle of orientation, the principal stresses and orientations, or maybe the maximum in-plane shear stresses, and inevitably it requires that you draw a representative element in that new orientation. And uh, um, Moore's circle is, is a nice way to visualize all this and, and come up with, and that way you don't have to memorize any equations or anything. And if you understand it, really you can transform any any state of stress from any angle of orientation to another one. Um, and But you really, you know, the principal stresses and maximum in-plane stresses, those maxes are, are important to us because they'll tell us things about like cracking behavior of a structure or, or uh, um, or, you know, just how to design for for a specific state of stress. So here, you know, normally we have this given state of stress here uh, that we calculated, and, and let's talk about how we would construct more circle from that. So here, let's, let's going down over here, we've got this state of stress, and I've got, let's say I, I draw here some, some stress value, some normal stress here, some shear stress condition that causes this, this, and this, okay? And then some stress, some normal stress here and here, just to, to make sure that we have equilibrium. And one thing I want you to notice that, hey, I didn't establish any coordinate system. I didn't label anything sigma x, sigma y, okay? These are essentially just numbers indicating a state of stress at this representative volume element. And really the first thing that you need to do here is one is establish a coordinate system, okay? Establish a coordinate system for your given state of stress. Okay, establish this coordinate system. So here, we'll we'll start off simple. We'll we'll do a base, and this is the way you should normally do it, right? But here is like, here is I'll I'll, st I'll call this my plus x direction. This my plus y. Okay, and and here then now I can assign labels to each of these these this normal stress component. It's this is a normal stress in the x direction, so I would call this sigma x. And then here, this is my uh, normal stress in the y direction here. And here, this, based on my coordinate system, this shear stress is a positive shear stress because it's on the plus x face in the plus y direction. And, you know, I can look at the same thing here, plus y face in the plus y direction. You know, positive times a positive is a positive. Here, it's a negative y face in the negative x direction. Negative times a negative is a positive. So this is, according to my coordinate system, this is a a positive shear stress condition. So I, I, I established this coordinate system. Two, two is I want to determine the center of Moore circle. And that center of Moore circle, you know, is this center point is um, essentially sigma average comma zero in a in a sigma tau coordinate system okay that you're going to draw for more circle but but the center is just the average stress so the sigma average is just sigma x plus sigma y divided by two comma zero and it's and you know in plane stress and 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 even 3d stress this is you know it's always zero okay the center of the circle always rests on the the sigma axis so now what we want to do is now that we know the point for the center we want to draw draw the coordinate system, draw a sigma tau coordinate system, okay, coordinate system, and, 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 draw, and draw, and, and draw the center point, okay, the center point. So here, if I, if I'm doing that here, okay, once I've established my coordinate system, I've got this, uh, um, this here, let's, I'm going to draw my coordinate system, let's say I have here, uh, la, 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 let's do here, right here, okay, and, and normally what you do is plus sigma to the right. Now, depending on what kind of convention you're using, whatever, you know, what book you're using or however you want to look at this, uh, I, I'm a big fan of using this plus tau in the downward axis, okay? And, and the reason is because 
when you rotate, if you will, in more circle, we'll get to this in a little bit, but when you rotate in more circle clockwise, what you want to do is so that, you know, that we want that transformation to be one to one, if you will. Uh, well, okay. So, but if you wrote, what I want is that if I rotate clockwise in more circle, I want to rotate clockwise in my, in my stress state. Okay. And so here I, I've got this, uh, um, you know, this, this axis drawn, I draw my center point. Here is my center point. Okay. This is my center point, sigma average comma zero right here. Okay. And then now the next thing I want to do is I want to draw or locate, locate one point on the outer radius on the outer radius outer radius of of that circle of circle of more circle okay and this will give me the point that i need so i can draw the circle but here i've got uh, um let's say i've got here and that outer point you know a lot of, you know that point a we'll call it point a is just uh, um uh, sigma x comma tau x y the values that are up here in this state of stress up here okay it just we just take them directly to this point right here so this this would just be hey sigma x hey 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 sigma x would be you know some number let's say oh let's say it's just the way let's make this look kind of real here let's say it's like uh, over here sigma x so sigma y divided by two oh, let's just say it's over here okay it's some number over here and in the plus tau x y so this is point a uh point a point a with sigma x comma tau x y all right and and so now i've got this uh, um, i can draw my circle i've got this uh, radius if you will already set up right here the radius of it which i go oh oops okay which i go like this right here there, there is my one arm, and I just swing that all the way around 360 to make a circle. And can I even do this? Let's see. I, I think I've got something here that's about the same size. Let's see if that one that works. Oh, shoot! If I had a steadier hand, I would be a maybe a professional artist. Oh, snap! It's homeless. All right. Okay, but it's a circle nonetheless. It's a circle, and it will do for us. Okay, it will do. And, and if you look here, look, check this out. This is sigma average right here, okay? And here is this point right here is this distance is sigma x. And this distance to point A right here is tau xy. Yes, okay? So that means, hey, I know, I know this distance right here. I know that distance is just sigma x minus sigma average. I don't know. Not that distance is right about here. That distance right there is sigma average. Right here, that distance right there is sigma x minus sigma average. Okay, and here, this distance right here is tau xy, right? This this vertical distance going like this. Now I essentially have a triangle, and if I want the radius of this right here this radius, then I just have to do, you know, for the triangle, Pythagorean theorem, square root of some squares, this radius, which would be, I guess, step five, calculate the radius, five, calculate radius right here. And uh, um, you calculate this radius and you've got, uh, what is this? This would be sigma x minus sigma average squared plus tau xy squared. Okay. And that's the, the radius of the circle. That's great, right? And that, that that means once you know the radius of the circle and you know this dimension, you can also calculate this angle right here, okay? And and, and look at this. The maximum the maximum stresses or the maximum normal stresses are, are this point right here and the uh, minimum would be this one right here, okay? These two endpoints. And this is, these are our principal stresses, sigma 1, sigma 2, and then our maximum shear stresses would be up here or up down here. This would be tau max. Okay, sigma one being the anyways maximum principal stress and, and look and once you know this this right here, so the nice thing about this is that uh, this right here when I look at this circle right here this line represents right here theta equals zero degrees or this original coordinate system theta equals zero degrees 
And if I want to get to my maximum principal stresses, I go this angle, this angle right here in, in more circle. If I go, if I rotate, uh, what is this? Well, counterclockwise in more circle, then I'm going to rotate this, my state of stress counterclockwise, and that's going to give me a, a stinking state of principal stress there. All right. Let's see. Hopefully I didn't butcher this too much, but uh, good luck. I'm going to stop here and then we'll do, we'll do, let's do an example problem. That's always, you know, clear, clears things up. All right. See ya.